All right, everyone, welcome back. We're going to be finishing this chapter with some challenge examples. Uh, they're primarily just going to be with free fall, but uh, let's see how you guys do with this. I'd say if you're able to do this, you'd be pretty good in a regular physics class or maybe even an honors physics class. So let's look at this. A rock is dropped from the roof of a house. From the moment it was dropped, it takes 1.2 seconds to reach the top of the door. It then takes an additional 0.2 seconds to reach the bottom of the door. How tall is this door? Okay, so let's, uh, of course, it's really important to draw things out, write down key piece of information, and then do this. And as problems become harder, you're, what you're going to notice is there's many different ways you can do the problem. So I would highly suggest trying to figure this out yourself uh, and then seeing how I did it. It might be completely different and you might get the same answer. So anyway, I'm going to go on, but pause if you need to. Okay, it's dropped. From the moment it's dropped, it takes 1.2 seconds to reach the top of the door. Okay, so from here to here, I'm going to call this time one equals 1.2 seconds. It then takes an additional 0 0.2 seconds to reach the bottom of the door. Okay, so from here to here, I'm going to call this time 2 is equal to 0 0.2 uh, seconds. Okay, how tall is this door? Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to be doing, how should I do this? There's multiple ways of doing this. Hmm. Okay, uh, what I'm going to be doing, there's a lot of ways of doing this, is I'm going to be taking this whole time from here to here, and I'm going to be finding out how much it fell. So this total time, maybe I'm going to call it T total, is equal to 1.4 seconds. And I'm going to be finding that displacement from that 1.4 seconds. And then I'm going to do some other things. Okay, so first of all, using this, and maybe I'll change the color at this point. Uh, let's go to red. Um, so using these piece of information of the red here, let's figure this out. So acceleration of gravity from when it was dropped is negative 10 meters per second squared. When it was dropped, it had an initial velocity of zero, and it fell all the way to the ground uh, in 1.4 seconds, and I am finding the displacement at that point right there. Okay, so now I have displacement is equal to one half acceleration of gravity times time squared. So this is gonna be one half acceleration of gravity being negative 10, time being 1.4 squared and let me put this into my calculator 1.4 squared times 25 I get negative 9.8 meters okay so this is not the answer what this means is this stone dropped from here to here and that was a height of 9.8 meters However, what we want to know, and I'm going to change colors at this point, what we want to know, hmm, what should I do? Light green? Okay. Is we want to know what the height of the door is, right? How tall is the door? So from here to here, this is what we want to do. And it's not proportional, so we need to figure that out, but we need to figure out what this height is. So how I'm going to do that, and again, there's many ways of doing that is I'm going to figure out how tall this point is from here. When it first fell, when it was dropped, until it fell 1.2 seconds later, what is this height? So I'm going to figure that out. Uh, now I'm going to do that all in this other color. Acceleration of gravity is negative 10 meters per second squared. When it was dropped, it had a velocity of zero. It fell for 1.2 seconds. And we want to know after it fell for 1.2 seconds, what was its displacement? So let's see. D equals one half acceleration of gravity times time squared. And this is going to be one half uh, negative 10, 1.2 squared. And then let's see what we have for the displacement. Okay. 1.2 squared times negative, uh, negative 7.2 meters. And what this is telling me is this D, this distance, when it first dropped, and it dropped for 1.2 seconds, reaching the top of the door, this reached a height, I mean, it fell a height of 7.2 meters. So I can figure out how high this door is, and maybe I'll do that in a different color. I'll go with the blue, light blue. I'll figure out what this height of this door is by subtracting this 9.8, which is the whole thing, minus from where it reached the top of the door. I'm going to do 
minus 7.2, and then we get 2.6 meters. That is the height of the door. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Uh, and if not, you could watch it again. But that's the first challenge problem. Pretty difficult, probably maybe harder than the other ones, but there's a lot of steps in this one. So good for you if you guys were able to figure it out. Okay, let's move on. And again, there's many ways of doing it. Okay, a ball is launched from the ground and goes straight up. It takes the ball six seconds to go all the way up and all the way down. How high did the ball reach from the ground? Okay. Okay. Man, not much information. So it gets thrown up, goes all the way up, all the way down, and takes a time of six seconds. So that's all we know. And it seems like, man, with all that, somehow we have to figure out how high it reached from the ground. So we have to figure out what this height is right here. So it seems like we don't know much, but what I want you to do is I want to see what other piece of information might you know about this that it is not giving us. Okay, so we have a lot. So we should know at the very top here, the velocity is going to be equal to zero. What we should also know is the time it takes from when the ball is launched to when it reaches that very top point uh, is three seconds. Another thing we should know is when it reach, it goes from the very top to the very bottom, that's also three seconds. Okay, so those are all things we should know. Maybe you could pause it now and figure it out if you were stuck, but I'm going to move on. So let's figure out this, this height over here. And how I'm going to do that is I'm actually only, maybe I'm going to change the color first. I'm only going to be looking at half of this problem. So I'm going to be looking from the very top point of view to the very bottom. So, and that's the same kind of a problem as if we can imagine a ball being dropped. And then it falls and takes three seconds to hit the ground. And we're looking for uh, how high was it dropped from. And that seems like a pretty easy problem at this point. So we're pretty much just going to do that. So first of all, uh, acceleration of gravity is equal to negative 10 meters per second squared. Uh, I'm going to be saying that when it's for, when it's from the all the way at the top, we're saying that's the beginning part. So I'm going to say that initial velocity is zero. It takes three seconds to hit the ground. And we're looking for the distance that it takes to hit the ground uh, from that point or the displacement, I should say. Okay, displacement is equal to one half acceleration of gravity times squared, one half negative 10, three squared. And let's put this into my calculator. And we get negative 45 meters as the displacement. However, we should know that we only care about the height and the height should be a positive number. So this is just going to be 45 meters. Pretty hard. If you're able to get it, good for you. These are pretty difficult problems, so good job. All right, conceptual example here. You drop a penny. After it travels four meters, you drop another penny. As the penny falls, does their distance away from each other increase, decrease, or stay the same? Pretty tricky one. Uh, pretty common for people to get this wrong. Uh, think about it. So a lot of times people will say it stays the same. All throughout as it's falling, the acceleration of gravity is equal to negative 10 meters per second squared. And since the acceleration of gravity is the same throughout, that means that as it's falling, the distance away from each other uh, is going to be staying the same. However, that would not be correct if that is your thought process, though it is a very common thought process. So what we should know is, remember, acceleration is not the same as velocity. So even though the acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared the whole time while it's falling, the velocity is different. At the very beginning, the velocity, uh, when it's first dropped, the velocity is zero. But then it's going to be getting faster and faster and faster. Okay. And if it's getting faster and faster every, every moment, if it's constantly getting faster and faster, that means, like, for example, the distance away from each other, if this was like the first second, 
The second second, since it's going to be going faster, is this going to be the second second. And the third second is going to go faster and faster. This will be the third second, and so on. So since it's getting faster and faster, as time goes on, um, it's going to be going further and further away from each other. So after it travels four meters, uh, you drop another penny. As the penny falls, does their distance away from each other increase, decrease, or stay the same? So let's look at this. We have a penny here, and we have another penny here. So after this has gone four meters, this penny is already going really fast. But this first, uh, the second penny has just has a velocity of zero. So it's gonna it's gonna be getting faster and faster. However, this is also going to be getting faster and faster, and it already started with the high speed. So the distance is going to be increasing from each other. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> All right. Uh, hit the leave. Oh, that's it. What did I write? Uh, let me erase some of this so we can see that. Uh, increases since the first penny will always be faster than the second penny. Their distance will increase as they fall. Okay. Yep. All right, guys, let's look at this ex uh, last example problem. The height of someone who has, <laughs> the highest height someone has ever been able to jump from the ground is 1.27 meters. How long were they in the air? Okay, so let's kind of draw this out here. So we're drawing this out. We have this person, highest jump ever. And the only real information we know about this problem is this person jumped 1.27 meters off the ground. And we want to figure out how long, whoops, how long did this take? Okay. And that's all the piece of information that we have. So how do we figure this out? So there's a few things here that we can do. Uh, I would, I'm going to be doing the simplest way, but there's many ways of solving this problem. We should know, and I'm going to change the color here. We should know that at the very top, the velocity is equal to zero. Another thing that we should know is that we can figure out how long it takes to get half of the time. And that should probably help us because we can kind of redraw this problem and it should look a lot simpler now as if like an object is dropping and then it falls a displacement of negative 1.27 meters. And now we can just figure out what that time is. So let's now figure this out. Acceleration of gravity is negative 10 meters per second squared. We have the displacement is equal to negative 1.27 meters. We have the initial velocity, meaning at the very top, it started with a velocity of zero because we're only looking at half of this problem. And then we'll figure out the other half later. And then let's try to figure out the time. So from before, we should know that the time formula is square root of 2d times acceleration of gravity, which means time is equal to two times negative 1.27 divided by negative 10. And let's put this into our calculators and figure this out. Two times 1.27 divided by negative 10, and we get 0 0.25, but remember we have to find the square root of that and we get pretty much 0 0.5 seconds. And you might be saying, Okay, that's how long it took for um, this person to go up and down. But however, that's not correct. Remember, we only found this half of the problem, meaning from the very tippity top to the bottom, it took 0 0.5 seconds. But what we should all know is if it took that much time to go all the way down, that's also how long it took to go all the way up. So the total time should be one second. Okay, so if anyone is claiming that they were in the air longer than one second from when they jumped, um, they're probably lying, but you could also check that out. All right, thanks guys for watching this whole series of conceptual physics, and I hope I see you with the next chapter. Bye.